1620, while the Mayflower was in Provincetown, 18 of its men sailed in a small shallop, searching for a place to live. They came to present-day East Ham, where they were met by a group of Nosset. After a brief but violent encounter, the English left towards today's Plymouth. In 2020, we remember this first encounter. We explore its meanings for today and tomorrow. Good evening. I'm Deborah DeJonka Berry, the Library Director. Welcome to our Sunset Series. I'm here with the East Ham Town Administrator, Jackie Beebe. Do you think that the ability to continue on with the skills that we are learning um, will be something that you know will benefit the community f in the future? I do. I think that we will continue to make investments in technology that allows, for instance, one of the areas we're a little bit behind some other towns is some online payments. And where our whole financial staff turned over two years ago, I was being more cautious about that. We will forge ahead with those improvements and make sure that, you know, in the coming years we'll have much more ability to pay online for any service that we offer. I think that's one of the things. But the other is, you know, teamwork and collaboration and communication is not reliant on being in the same building. And I think those of us who have grown up in a work environment that is that does discourage remote participation, I think that's a really good thing to remember and to keep and to keep nurturing. Um, it opens up a lot of doors for us. And I like that we are able to stay behind those doors right now because, you know, I, I, I so respect our first responders who have to go out um, and, and the businesses that stayed open in this community. I, I think they're my heroes. It's totally, totally. I think that was the other thing that was exciting to watch is the response of the business community. And, and some people said, you know, I, I don't have the capability or the willingness to do that. And that was fine. But when you look at someone like the Superette and Sarah and her team who just kept responding, you know, if something didn't work, they just tried something new and they stayed open and they stayed serving and they provided an invaluable irreplaceable service to a lot of our elders who really did not want to be going out to stop and shop. You know, it was that simple. It was amazing. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, th I think about every town department and so many of the businesses um, that are continuing to serve mm -hmm. and, you know, in providing, as you say, innovative ways. How do you think um, we're going to start to come out of this, that, you know, that how do we reopen is we going to slow it down or continue or you know gauge it by what's happening i i do think we need to continue to gauge it by what's happening i think one of the things that i'm very aware of with staff and and have been is that since late february we've been we were for probably well into april in crisis mode and we needed to actively defend, especially the departments that were out there first responding. You know, we don't have a lot of firemen and policemen. If, if COVID-19 got inside our police station or our fire station, that would be horrible for us. That would be devastating. So we really needed to do that. So staff now, you know, early on in the crisis, I would say to my emergency management team, and we met every day, <laughs> Um, this is not a sprint, it's a marathon. And I'm worried that we need to stop working 24 hours a day and stop responding to everything and really start to think of how are we going to last because lasting is, is the most important thing. Because the community needed us then but also needs us every day. So now I think going into the 4th of July, for me, I'm realizing that as people are tired of this crisis and there's a fatigue going on with this disease and all the sacrifices that we've had to make, 
Um, but now I have staff that is going into their busiest season tired. And so I'm really making an effort to try and protect that as much as possible. So adding uh, public interaction at this point before we're ready, I think is, is not wise, especially when we can do most of what we're doing and we can make it work. And I think it's easier for us to make decisions like extending beach stickers for a few weeks so that people have time to get them rather than rushing to have everyone get them on July 1st. Things like that make a difference and we can do it. And it's not a, it's not a life or death thing. So I'm taking my time. I'm going as, as slowly and as deliberately as possible. And I think when we do open Town Hall, it will be only a couple of days a week so that we can do a deep cleaning in between and so that people can continue to do the work that they need to do without worry and without a lot of interruptions. And I think that's the most important thing is to try to keep everyone safe. Yes. And you know, I, I'm not surprised, but I am seeing how careful the public is. Yes. You know, they're not coming out. They're being careful and, and responsible. And you know, and I think that, that there are partners in this and we're lucky that we have this community where everybody is so incredibly responsible. And I have to say, though, I do miss them. And I know you do at the library. I know the COA does. It's hard to do what we do without the people that we serve because that interaction is necessary and important, and I get that. So it is hard to, to miss um, some people, although I think everyone's sort of adjusting. We're learning to Zoom, we're learning to email, we're learning to talk on the phone more as opposed to do the in-person pop-ins, but, but I do miss that interaction, and we, we do want to get back to that at some point. And I think that's a great way to wrap this up, is to talk about the community and the people that we miss so much, and that we're trying to come up with ways to interact with one another without endangering each other and I just came out of the East Ham 400 commemorative meeting and I mean the series that the Historical Society is planning I, I just can't wait you know and we have our sunsets every evening that you know we can all get together um, and and watch this program and we have our campfire series mm -hmm. that'll be kicking in very soon I think it's on Wednesday nights in um, July and August so I want to thank you so much Jackie um, I just love talking to you all the time and we hope you come back thank you me too thank you my name is Joanna Hollick I hope that you're enjoying the Sunset Series so far. In addition to the Sunset Series, East Ham 400 is also producing a second program called the Campfire Series, which will take place on Sundays in July and August. The Campfire Series is a series of one hour long videos that will focus more in depth on some of the themes that we discuss here at the Sunset Series. The first Campfire Series video, which will be released on July 5th, is a recording of a presentation given by Ian Saxing last fall, in which he discusses his book, The Story of the First Encounter at Nauset. The second Campfire series video, which will be released on July 13th, is a presentation given by Mark Adams, as he talks about the changing environment and landscape here on Cape Cod. The Campfire series videos can be found in the same places that the Sunset series videos can be found on our East Ham 400 YouTube channel or at easthamp400.org. We hope that you will join us for this series. Thank you. <laughs>